second time doing a popular book opinion video. I'm not ready for this. I asked on Twitter and on the YouTube community tab to give me your most unpopular ones and I haven't read all of them but some of them seem definitely on the woo -hoo 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 side so bear with me. My bangs were too long. I was too lazy to cut them this morning so they're gonna get very flat throughout this video. We don't mind. I'm still keeping them bish because people telling me to let them grow. No. First one, it's okay if someone doesn't like reading, it's not the end of the world. I agree, I don't think there's any strong reaction really. Do people actually care that badly? I feel like maybe on book two, but in everyday life, I don't think people really care that bad. But would I prefer my significant other to read? Yes, just because I love making people read books that I think they're going to enjoy. And I would like to be with someone that feels the same, you know? So I don't think it's a big deal, but I would rather people in my life read more because pretty much no one in, in real life, you know? <laughs> on book two, yes, but like in real life, nobody reads, I feel like. Or they actually just don't read what I read. Just because it's a classic doesn't mean it's good. Ugh, do I agree with that one. Is it really unpopular? I feel like it's gonna be my reaction for everything. Is it really unpopular? We're just gonna assume they are. We're just gonna talk about them no matter what. Uh, I agree, I feel like quite often classics have been considered classic by I don't know who and now they're just classic and we all have to accept it that they're good and no like for example Jane Eyre I know I know I read it two years ago I think on booktube and I like Jane I liked her childhood I like her as a character you know being a strong female character back in the day fine I get that but I hated the romances especially you know the main one whatever like Whoever says that Jane and Mr. Rochester are like a good romance and they ship them, I question your sanity. I hope you're generally doing okay because why? No, no, no. I prefer hard covers. I don't like paperback, even the floppy ones. And I'm getting other ones that are saying the opposite. I understand why people like hard covers. I do feel like they look good on the shelf. They tend to be more solid, last longer, blah, blah, blah. But I much prefer the floppy huge paperbacks are just so comfortable to hold in your hands they just you know when you do this with them it just brings me joy and actually i'm seeing other people saying that they love mass market paperback no <laughs> i mean they're practical if you're traveling i like like the old school ones one second i dropped some of them behind the bookshelf how did they uh, how um but like these type of like old school like fantasy i don't care that they're in like a mass market paperback slash you usually can see that they're well loved. What? There's a sheet of music in it? Good to see. Um, what? But you know, those I'm okay with it. In Mars Market Paperback, even the classics, like in French, I feel like they're always in this edition, the Folio Classic. Um, I'm okay with it. But like, I don't want most of my books to be in that shape. No. Format. <laughs> Words. No. Yeah. My opinion. Which one is the unpopular one? I don't know. I feel like not loving hardcover is almost more unpopular. And loving West Market. Yeah, those are the unpopular ones. <laughs> Faces on book covers are fine if done well, they just usually aren't. You know what? I'm a big hater of faces on covers, but I, I think I agree with you because sometimes I'll say, oh, that one I'm okay with it. So like, that's probably true. It's the same thing with like love triangles and like romance. I don't 100% hate them. It's just they're usually so badly done that I say that I hate them. <laughs> and popular opinions are not that unpopular. True. We're seeing that right now, but still, it's fun to talk about these things. It's just like prompts for a topic, you know? <laughs> I'm just not interested in reading contemporary slice of life at all, especially not YA. You know what? Yeah. They're kind of popular. I feel like they're quite popular, especially the YA contemporary ones uh, on booktube. And I can understand why, because I feel like often why starts earlier to like be more, what's the word, inclusive. Like you'll, you know, two, three years ago, there was a bunch of new YA contemporary LGBTQ plus books that came out. And a lot of it was like marketing, but it's still nice to finally get those. And I feel like adults is kind of lagging sometimes. I'm not usually a big slice of life or contemporary person. I read some of them because once in a while I'll find one that I love. But uh, with, for example, the Goodreads reading challenge, I read some and majority of them, I just don't really care. Now, all female characters have to have children to be fulfilled. <sighs> okay, 
spoiler free, but there's a big series, this famous whatever, that at the end the female character has kids even though she didn't really want to have kids. And ugh, I hate that. And like other people were saying how like not every character needs to be like matched in a relationship. Yes, please stop. It's so annoying, especially when like even the side characters, everyone has to have like a relationship. No, <laughs> no, like make it stop. Uh, not everyone wants that and like stop. <sighs> I would be okay without it, you know? It's not necessary. If anything, it ruins the books. That's kind of why I enjoyed, I don't think it's a spoiler, but like mini spoilers for the Poppy War, the first book. The main character, I'm gonna keep it vague, basically decides to be f all that shit. And I really appreciated that. That was nice. A Wizard at Artsy might be considered a fantasy classic, but it was still bad. So much telling and not showing. Yes. Everyone is always telling me to read that book when I say that I like like the magical school premise. I read it, or actually I tried it. Did I finish it? I don't even remember. I hated every second of it. And that's not because of the author. I've loved other books by her and I have two more on my TBR, but like I could not get into it. I hated it. And like years later, it's like, you know, in one sentence, it's like, why? Why? No, I want to know how you learned that magic. What? So yeah, no, I, I did not like it either. It's like the idea that adult books are automatically dark and gritty and just realistic. Give me all the fluffy adult SFF books. Yes, please. Not enough of them. Like I was trying to recommend to people like non-depressing ones because, you know, pandemic. And like, I didn't have a long list. <laughs> Either I enjoy the dark ones or like there just aren't a lot. I'm pretty sure it's the latter. Uh, like the only one I can think of top of my head would be The Long Way to Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, which is a sci-fi that is kind of wholesome. But other than that, uh, a lot of people are saying that the fifth season was overhyped. Ouch. Ouch. Um, usually when I recommend it, I tend to, you know what? Oh, I can't deal with them, okay? We're just gonna bear with the like... <laughs> Dwight Schrute's look for today because I cannot. Um, but yeah, I usually mention that I don't think it's going to be for everyone because of the writing style especially, but it's so unique and interesting. And I overall enjoyed it, but I'll admit that it is confusing. Like I'll be like confused and I really love it and I'm confused again and really love it. So just be prepared. It's definitely not for everyone, but I don't think it's overhyped. The Cruel Prince is trash. Do People, I don't know because I feel like I did not like it whatsoever. Like I said, it was one of the most forgettable books that I've read. Like I literally have to force myself to remember what it was about. So I don't feel like on here it's that unpopular because, you know, echo chamber, if you say you hated it, people are like relief and also comment that they hated it. So I don't know how it is on the rest of book two, but I know some people definitely did enjoy it because I see reviews of like book number two. So like, was it? that popular oh a lot for saying that that it's okay to fold the corners and make notes in books <sighs> okay i do think that book people tend to freak out about it me included but like it's mostly in my head like i'll see it i'll be like oh but like it's your book do whatever you want you know but like i still get that little moment so it's okay just don't do it to mine obviously but like i'm not a fan of it but it's not my book so I like to crack the spine of my books. Oh, oh. That, that's it, you win. Most unpopular opinion. I try to keep mine looking literally brand new. Like, I'll read a book, you can't tell I read it. You know what I mean? Like, even the must market paperback. I will generally, again, like whenever they look loved, I'm okay with it when I buy them used. If I buy them new, they will still look new. And I hate, hate letting someone grab my book and read it. And I do it anyway because I get excited. I want them to love it, right? And then I regret it when I get it back. And I'm like, <laughs> thanks. And like, you know what? Oh, I bought this book used at uh, Value Village. And when that woman put it in a freaking bag afterwards, she bent it. Like literally, I don't want to make it back because I like put it for a while. But she literally like... You probably don't see it, but there's a line there. She literally bent it in front of me, putting it in my bag. I was, uh, it actually hurt to see. So don't do it to my books. 
Not sure if it's unpopular enough, but the amount of unhealthy relationships in popular YA book to this day is astounding. You know what? I don't actually disagree with that. Um, I do think that people would be like, you know, it's okay to like these things in books. Yeah, but it's true that a lot of the popular ones tend to be kind of... And I feel like when you read them older, like as an adult, whatever, it's fine because you can actually, you know, detach yourself and realize that it's not a healthy relationship. But I do think that when you're younger, you don't necessarily have the capacity of doing that. So I, I, yeah, I can see how, yeah. The Hunger Games is overrated. Yeah. And Peter was useless in the second book. I like Peter though. Also his dark materials is boring as, get the f out, get out. <laughs> no, no. Uh, his dark materials is awesome. So no. <laughs> Probably an actual and popular opinion, at least on here. The uh, companion series, though, sucks. But really? You found it boring? I loved it. Maybe it's because I grew up with it, but like, really? Aww. The Night Circus, The Song of Achilles, and The Bear and the Nightingale are yawn worthy. Uh, I agree with The Night Circus. The writing was beautiful, but didn't care for the ending, nor really the story that much. Uh, the Song of Achilles, I definitely disagree. And The Bear and the Nightingale, I agree. Could not finish it. I barely started it. A lot of people talk about love triangles and honestly I do agree that they usually kind of suck because usually you know who's going to win. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of pointless and too often one of the you know two guys after the woman whatever is like her best friend. I hate that so much. It just pushes the whole idea of friend zone. I, I no, we don't need that right now. We don't. So, uh-uh. More than half of the flat romances in books would have been better if the author, uh, if the authors were more patient with their development and didn't shove them together in book one. Yes, thank you. I remember I was doing a like read the first chapter uh, challenge with a bunch of YA books, and one of them literally first page, the main female character sees this dude, and you know it's going to be the dude. First page, what's the point? I don't even have time to care about anyone. That's like one of the things I had enjoyed in the Ancestor trilogy, like the romance, which was not, you know, a big deal in the story, started in a novella in between book two and three. That's what I want, you know what I mean? Like you give me enough time to get invested in characters and then start shipping people and then it happens. Fine, I'll allow that, but not first page in the first book. Like why? Who? instead, Instead of hauling a hundred books a year, use your local library more. Hopefully it's not targeted towards me. I do think I, well, I haven't bought books in a while because you know, I use my library quite a bit, especially again this year, like more than 50% of the books that I've read were from my library. Uh, but I also tend to buy a lot of books used again from my library. So I have, you know, I don't feel any guilt there because I'm giving them money so they can buy more books. So that's fine. Uh, I do think it's perfectly okay though for people that, you know, if you have the money and the means and you just like owning books, I don't really care that much. I don't really care what people do with their money and as long as they're not, you know, harming anybody else or themselves, who cares? But I do think on booktube it should be part of our responsibility, you know, using our platform to promote. Just using your library. Why not? Stephen King's best stories have very little horror in them. I mean, my favorite book by him was uh, The Long walk, which isn't that horror-ish, I guess. It's pretty disturbing, but not that horror, I guess. So I guess I agree. I actually think Stephen King in general is overrated. Cause like I read a bunch of his books and then I did that video where I was reviewing all of them in there, I forgot to, but you know what I mean? I talked about all of the ones I read in that video. And I realized that like, except for that one, I didn't really care about most of them and some of them I hated. So like, I feel like I wanted to read so many because I kept hearing people talk about them and I just didn't really care. So I haven't read that many since, so. Absolutely love the a nobody or a farm, farm boy goes on an adventure and defeats a dark lord trope and will never get tired of it. I don't hate it, but I hate when they get really powerful overnight. That's what I hate. Like I'm thinking Aragon, for example. Uh, Aragon, Aragorn, whatever. You know, the dragon. Uh, I hated it because of that. Well, there were a few of the reasons, but I really didn't like how like literally overnight he became the most powerful, you know, person ever. Don't care for that part, but the nobody, I'm okay with it. Ooh, that's a good one. 
Aristotle and Dante discovered the secret of the universe. I don't understand the hype. Zero plot, very lame twist, boring as fuck characters. What's there to like? Seriously. Thank you. Um, I read it because of booktube. And out of like, I think I read like in a row, like five very popular similar books, like contemporary Y with the main male characters, uh, LGBTQ plus that is character driven. And like out of all of them, it was my least favorite one. If you really like character driven, you know, slice of life one coming of age, you might enjoy that one. But again, in between all the other ones that I've read, it's my least favorite one. I much prefer uh, We Are The Ends, which that one is my favorite one of those very specific ones. So it's also the darkest one, I think, but it's my favorite one. So my two cents. It definitely is, I feel like, overhyped on booktube. If you wait more than five years to write a sequel, it's probably just a money grab. Oh, they don't know how to finish their series. Or, you know, a prequel. Ooh, that's gonna be an interesting one. I don't, ex I don't expect books written prior to 2020 to reflect 2020 opinions on society, politics, inclusion, etc. I don't think it's fair to hate on a book written 1800s for not being inclusive, blah, blah, blah. Yes and no, bear with me. I think it should be completely fair though to do that because I do feel like I hear the opposite way more. People getting angry, for example, for me, uh, complaining about certain things in the book because I'm seeing it through a 2020 lens. And I think it's fair to say that certain classics don't survive the test of time and I shouldn't have to. I'm not saying that's what you're saying, but you know, some people will tell me that, you know, you have to read it, it's a classic, blah, blah, blah. And like, I shouldn't have to put myself through that just because you, random person, consider it a classic type of thing. Like, no, it's perfectly fair to have complaints about them and being very hateful. Like, for example, a lot of people were telling me that I needed to read, uh, is it Stranger on a Stra in a Strange Land? Whatever, it's a classic sci-fi. Uh, I like sci-fi, everyone is always saying you should read that one. And I've seen quotes. I'm not, I, I don't hate myself that much. Like, it's just not gonna happen. Like, I will hate every second of it. We all know this. So like, why would I torture myself and just pull out all of my hair when I, I will read it and want to burn it? Like, you know, I don't care if it's classic. There are plenty of other classics that aren't sexist, racist, homophobic. Like, why do I have to read it, you know? No, no. So yeah, I think we should still uh, accept to not blame other people for being tired of hearing that stuff. Unless they're very well made, I hate redemption arcs. Does anyone ever like them? I'm curious because I agree. So I don't know if that's unpopular, but I agree. <laughs> More people liking to break the spine of their books. I can't deal, just reading it, I'm cringing. <laughs> Ms. Bourne is boring AF. Warbreaker is much better. Okay, um, you know what? I'll allow it. In my opinion, Ms. Bourne is not the right way to start reading Brenda Sanderson. Like, I feel like everyone is always saying to start with that one, and I always say not to, because it's three books. They're kind of long. I do feel like they could have been a little bit more. Um, but they do reflect, you know, his usual style. It gives people an idea, but it's too long. Three big books. They're all like 600 plus pages. So I usually recommend people either read Elantris, but it's, I think it's first book ever. So I feel like it's not fully, you know, his usual style but it's still really good. So I agree that Warbreaker is usually the one I actually recommend people start with because it's a very classic Brandon Sanderson book and it's a standalone right now. And it has, you know, his usual style, his usual strength of like magic system, world building and ending and his usual weakness of like characters and everything, but it's not that bad. I did overall really, really like that one. It's again, even available for free as a PDF, I think on his website. So like, I agree that people should start with that one instead of Mistborn, but I don't think it was Boring as fuck, but whatever. <laughs> Audiobooks take longer to read than physical, physical or ebooks. Uh, I don't know, it depends on the speed you're reading them at. I don't listen to them at like two or three times the speed. I don't know how people do it. Uh, usually I'm at like 1.5, depending. Sometimes a little slower, sometimes a little bit faster. Uh, I think it's mostly that I use them whenever I can't physically sit down and read a book. So they're useful for that. You know, if I'm cleaning and I'm bored, I can easily listen and I feel like I'm not wasting my time as much type of thing. Depends on the speed, I think. I tend to like the second book in a trilogy where people say it suffers from the middle book syndrome. For example, Well of Ascension and uh, Obelisk Gate. Words, ah, uh, ooh, ooh. Uh, I've definitely complained about the middle book syndrome thing before, uh, yeah. However, I'm trying to think. One that I did enjoy was in the Winner's Curse trilogy. I think it's the Winner's Crown, the third one, Wait, what is it? 
yeah, winner's crime. Um, I think it was the best one of the three, and that's like the only time I can think of that that's the case. Because it's like a romance, which I know some people are like, why are you talking about romance, Emily? Listen, um, in that fantasy romance, I feel like the middle book was the best one because that's where there's the struggle. You know, the first one, they fall, there's that tension. Second one, they struggle. Third one, there's a resolution. So yeah, second one was the best one. <laughs> I guess that is an unpopular opinion. Blade Runner book is boring. Yes. Oh, okay, see, we were talking about classic sci-fi. I never loved them. <laughs> I like the concepts though. I do feel like they're sometimes important. I can see, you know, how things evolve, blah, blah, blah. Like for example, Solaris, it's like somewhere on that shelf. Um, like first contact with aliens, the alien is literally an ocean. There are pages and pages of like explaining the shapes of the waves. It's boring, okay? I'm here to admit it. But while I'm reading it, I'm not enjoying myself, but the concepts are interesting. You know, I can appreciate that. Uh, but Blade Runner did enjoy it, reading it. And they're saying actually that they like the movies. They don't like the movies either. So I don't know. But the concepts are interesting. <laughs> don't you dare. Pride and Prejudice is absolute shit. Get out. <laughs> Get out. Unsubscribe, unfollow, please. Ouch. Uh, I mean, clearly I disagree. I love that book. I love the BBC show. I like the Hollywood movie and I like the Bollywood one. So, to each their own. But the characters are meant to not be likable, by the way. I know you said characters are pieces of boo. Um, they're mine to be, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> I thought Peter Kavinsky from To All the Boys I've Loved Before was trash. Isn't that the first guy, right? I I'm terrible with names. If so, I agree. Um, I read the first two books in the trilogy and the second one was the most pointless book of all time. Um, so I, yeah, I don't like him, but I don't know if it's popular. I feel like if the actor wasn't attractive to most people, then, you know, people would also agree that he kind of sucks, so whatever. Oh, ooh. If a reviewer gives five stars to almost every book they read, the reviews aren't trustworthy. I wouldn't say trustworthy. I would say maybe valuable. <laughs> because, like, if I... When I read reviews, I don't want them to, like, obviously as a person, I hope you like everything you read, blah, blah, blah. But like, if I'm giving five stars to everything, it's hard to like learn what I'm going to enjoy if you like everything, you know? Like, I want you, even if you give one star to a book, if you explain why, then I might pick it up because I might enjoy it. You know what I mean? Like, I like details. Explain to me what you like, what you didn't, why, and I can use that information. But if I'm just gushing about everything that I read, then it's kind of pointless. So. I agree. Is it really unpopular? I don't know. Probably not on this channel. <laughs> I generally don't understand the obsession with fantasy. No judgment at all though. And why that's really the main type of booktuber on YouTube. Is it the main type? I feel like YouTube has more, like I'm not just referring to your comment. I know there are a few other ones. And like you can find literally everything on booktube. Uh, the bigger YouTubers tend to be why contemporary, why fantasy readers because publishers. So, um, eh, I don't know. I feel like fantasy is probably popular because of es escapism, maybe. But also, I feel like they're really original. And I get really bored reading just contemporary, whether Y or adult, really. I don't know why, just how it is. I like, I like concepts, you know? So that's probably why I read a lot of fantasy sci-fi. It's not all I read, but it's about 50% of what I read. <laughs> not every character has to be likable. Thank you. I freaking hate when people complain about that stuff. I tried to film like a second, you know, I read one star reviews of books that I love. Let me know if you actually want me to post it. Like it just, I just gave up on editing it to be honest. But people were complaining about Skyward, like how the main character is not likable. I'm like, she's not freaking meant to be. What is wrong with you? It's really obvious. And I get very angry over it. Um, I feel like people should definitely be more open about that to read books about non-likable characters because when that's your complaint and they're not supposed to be likable, it really annoys me. Same thing with um, a, an absolutely re remarkable thing by Hank Green. It's not, it, she's not meant to be likable. I get way angrier whenever the, the main character is supposed to be likable, like Selena, Throne of Glass, and she's so annoying. Like she's, that annoys me. So, you know. Nonfiction can be just as lyrical and beautiful as fiction. Ah, uh, sure, sure. I do sometimes 
dislike people that just read nonfiction though. <laughs> Actually, I hate people that are like, not because of lack of time or interest, but like, I, we all know that snobbish person. I only read nonfiction. The rest is not useful. Well, person, studies show the opposite, but okay. Three stars is not a bad review. I know. I know. That is why I literally just posted a video about not five star books, but, you know, they're still worth the read. So uh, definitely check that out if you are interested for, you know, mo more book recommendation of books that are not like mentioned a lot because we don't get enough of that on booktube. We forget, you know, we talk about the hateful ones, well, hateful reviews and like the gushing reviews, but what about the rest? Some of them have like great concept, great characters, great magic system or world building. Like that's, that's good stuff too. And just because I gave it three stars doesn't mean you're not going to give it five stars. So like, let's hear it. So yes. And three stars is good. I tend to say that though, like three stars and up on my channel is considered good because five stars is definitely the exception, like curve bell, you know, <laughs> I get very heated over nothing here. Most of the bookshelves on booktube make me cringe. <laughs> Why would you ever break a series to sort them by color? Um, look, I have two rainbow shelves. I've talked about them a lot. The first one I have read, the bottom one I have not read. You will notice that most of them, I think there's like one or two exceptions. Most of them are either standalone or the whole series is on there. So I don't really do that, but like I have a great memory. I know where every book pretty much is on my shelves and they're basically genre except for these two. So eh, eh. maybe it's an unpopular opinion. I don't think 500 to 700 page books uh, are considered a big book. To me, it's everything over 700 pages. Okay, personally, I say 500 just because that was just a random number and I've, you know, just started considering it bigger, probably because most of the books that I read are in between 300 and 500. So like, that's why in my head, everything that is bigger is considered big. I think it really depends on the size, like the font size. And I feel like why I tend to have like really big books, but you open it, the writing is really big. There's a bunch of spaces and it's that, like word count would not be that big. So I think it depends for that too. And the edition makes a big difference too. So. Okay, okay. I mean, meets 500, dude 700, it's all fine. I wish more books by non-USA Anglophone authors were popular on booktube. Um, you know, I think it's the lack of exp exposure. Cause like I'll read some French ones, mostly like classic French ones, and that's pretty much it. Like I've read a couple obviously other ones, but like it's definitely on uh, the minority side slash ever since I really noticed that like ever since I started doing the Goodreads reading challenge, uh, I, it really changed the diversity of my reading probably because people voting for the same thing over and over again. So uh, yeah, I do think it should be different. I think it's just a lack of exposure, a little bit of laziness and just but I agree, definitely feel like we should make more of an effort, me included. Classics and literary fiction are boring. The majority of people on booktube just have no critical thinking skills and prefer instant gratification. Ooh, that is bold. <sighs> I think it's perfectly fine to not enjoy them though. Like I don't think it's because they can't enjoy them, they just don't really care for it, you know? Like I read some, they're just not my favorite. And I don't think it's because I have no critical thinking skills. It's just not my jam. I just prefer other stuff. I'm not a fan of magical realism. Me too, baby, me too. <laughs> like, is it really unpopular here? No, I think I'm just thinking in my own brain because clearly I don't like it either. It's just so vague every time. It's like, nah, nah, nah. I'm like, ugh. Yeah, I, I feel you, I feel you. If you only read one genre, you aren't all that well-read. I don't think everyone wants to be well-read though. I don't think anyone claims to be either. Unless that person again reads nonfiction or just classics. <laughs> but like that's the person. I don't, nah, I disagree with that one. Cause I don't think people are pretending to. Three star book reviews are the most fun to write. Really? I much prefer writing like the bad ones, like one or two stars. Ooh, do I have fun with them? I, mean, I know you have fun hearing them, but five stars? Well, uh, five stars I do enjoy, but I no three and four is the, are the ones I struggle with the most <laughs> because I'm like, Meh. you know, I can see why people like them, but I didn't really care for it. That's like my review for like 90% of them. So I hate when a, oh, that is, oh, I feel, I feel attacked with that one. I'm sorry. I hate when a question asks for a favorite book and the booktuber pulls out 
<laughs> Pulls up at least five, choose one. I hate choosing favorites, okay? I hate it. Like literally you ask me my favorite color, I will name multiple. Like I hate choosing one. I did it when I did my, um, I read 400 books on booktube and I did it for like most genres except for my two main ones. And like, it was hard enough for that video. I couldn't do it for like adult fantasy and adult sci-fi. So <laughs> I definitely do that. So. <laughs> I don't like, oh, a lot of people complaining about the narration, first person, second person, third person. I don't notice it. Is that an unpopular opinion? I just don't notice it. Second, yes, second person, because that's weird. But like first or third, Ask me afterwards, it's gonna take me a while to even think about it. <laughs> I just don't notice it at all. Six of Crows is a mediocre book. If someone likes that book, I can only assume they never re read a good heist book and no one can change my mind. I mean, I don't think it's really an unpopular opinion with me because I've been very vocal about the fact that I feel like if the characters weren't this well liked, people wouldn't talk about it that much. And I feel like the magic system was incredibly underused in a duology, so. I kinda feel you. Like I didn't hate it, but I feel you. People hate the Twilight Saga mainly because of the movies. Most people haven't read the books and still hate them. Um, I think people really love to shit on what teenage girls love. And like, let's be real. Certain books like Harry Potter, The Hunger Games, Twilight, whatever, what I liked a lot was the fact that everyone was reading the books and you could talk about them. You know that general excitement? was awesome. Same thing with like Pokemon Go when it first started. Everyone was doing it. That was the fun part, you know what I mean? Uh, so I don't think they're, obviously nobody claims they're great literature though. They're meant to just be like candy, you know, junk food, whatever you call them, guilty pleasure. They're quick reads, they're readable. Uh, they definitely have a lot of flaws and that's fine, but like I liked that everyone was reading them. But yeah, the movies weren't, weren't good and the last book. <laughs> Let's not even talk about it. But yeah, whatever. So these were your unpopular book opinions and my reaction to them. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, please, in the comment section. Let's discuss this. Like, I want to know. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I want to know. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out. And I shall see you in my next video very soon. Bye.